Can you tell us something about the work in the Philippines that we're supporting during the month of March at Oceanside? Folks, we have never, as far as I know, supported the Philippine mission work. Have we? Not that I know. So we, yeah, we, we, we sent them some new songbooks that we had that we didn't no longer need. But as far as really supporting that work and as really knowing what it's all about, we've never done that. Now it's very easy for us because we don't know what something is to not realize that there is a big need there. So we're going to spend a little bit of time and we're going to do our best to introduce to you the work at the Philippines. Let's start with the missionary couple who's there. Their name is Michael and Deborah Stock. Michael and Deborah Stock. Their work is overseen by a congregation here in the United States known as the Piedmont Road Church of Christ in Marietta, Georgia. And what we mean by that is this. All monies that are collected for that work are sent to the Piedmont Road Church of Christ. They oversee all the funds. And then they are the ones who then distribute those funds to Michael and Deborah for their work. So the Piedmont Road Church of Christ is over the work. Michael was born in South Bend, Indiana. He can't help that. He was only born there. When you talk to him, he'll tell you real quickly that most of his life was spent in the state of Alaska, believe it or not. So that's where he was raised primarily. Deborah, on the other hand, is Filipino. She was raised in the Philippines. She is 100% Filipino. Michael is 51 and she is 42. Some might ask, how in the world did a guy from Alaska get together with a girl from the Philippines? Well, when Michael was attending the Sunset International Bible Institute, there was a man there from the Philippines who was studying to be a preacher. And somehow, in the course of their relationship, this guy looks at Michael and he says, You know what? I have a friend from the Philippines you need to meet. And guess what? That's the end of the story. They were married December 28th, 2006. So they've been married 18 years. Once they were married, the Philippine work was very important to them because of where Deborah came from. And they began to take numerous trips back and forth from the United States to the Philippines. But folks, they eventually located there. They don't have any children, even though they've been married that long, but they are raising three orphan children in their homes. Christy, John, and Jose. Right now, they are going through the adoption process in order to try to get Christy and John as their own children. So pray for them as they go through that process. Michael's background is Coast Guard and Army. Aren't you glad, Bill? I, th I, th I thought Bill might say, Amen! Deborah is a registered nurse. She attended school here in the United States to become a nurse. She has a BA and became a registered nurse here. She then went back to the Philippines and she attended a school called the, I can't hardly say it, Ramaldez Medical Foundation. And she got her doctor of medicine. She is an MD over there in the Philippines. Folks, after she acquired all of those things and Michael got out of the Coast Guard, he graduated from the Sunset School of Preaching, they decided to go full-time in May of 2012 in the Philippines. They live there all the time. Very seldom do they come back to the United States. So that's a little bit about the missionaries. So now let's turn our attention to the Philippines. 
Where in the world is the Philippines? Marilyn raises her hand. She says, I know. Right there is where the Philippines are. You can just barely see it in brown, can't you? It is just southeast of China and it is north of Australia. There's a little bit bigger picture of the Philippines, folks. It's interesting. The Philippines are located in the western Pacific Ocean. Note this. They are composed of 7,640 plus islands. Can you imagine that? When I think of an island, I just think about one, don't you? But over there, the entire nation is nothing but islands. Over 7,600 islands, in fact. It's a lot. Is referred to as an archipelagic, well that's a big word, archipelagic country. A country, a nation that is composed solely of islands. It was named for Philip II of Spain. And it acquired its name in 1543. The Philippines. Philip of Spain. The true name of it is the Republic of the Philippines. And folks, it has a population of 109 million people scattered throughout all of those islands. It's amazing, isn't it? The capital of the Philippines is Manila. Right there. Almost dead center. Just a little bit above dead center of the nation. There's a picture of it. A very highly populated city. But it is not in that city where the stocks are laboring. We'll talk about that more in just a minute. The government of the Philippines is a unitary presidential republic. There's many ethnic groups that are there. In fact, there's hundreds of ethnic groups that are there. This is something I found interesting. In the Philippines, there are 182 languages that are spoken. Get off one island, go to another, you got to speak another language. It's amazing, isn't it? There's really 186 languages that are associated with the Philippines, but four of them are no longer spoken languages. There are two languages that are the official languages, Filipino and English. There's two main religious groups that are found in the Philippines. Number one, Catholics. They represent about 75 to 70 percent 76% of the religious groups that are there. Now there are other, what we would call, Christian groups, and I put that in quotation marks, denominational groups that are there, but they represent just a small segment of the Christian population. Now there's another huge religious group that's there, and it's the Muslims. Okay, oops, sorry about that. It's the Muslims that are there. So we have similar to other nations of the world, don't we? The Muslims have made inroads into that place. Let's talk about their work for just a minute. We may note that they began full-time mission work in the Philippines in May of 2012. Their focus is on an island in the Philippines referred to as Bohol. And you see it right there, just right in the almost center of the Philippines. That's where Michael and Deborah have done most of their work. When they went there, there were 50 Christians on that island. And there were no full-time ministers till they got there. It's amazing, isn't it? Ten years later, there are now five churches, four full-time ministers, and 230 Christians on that island. It's amazing, isn't it? It's not a bad work if you really think about it. They've done a lot of laboring since they've been there. They've had nine church plantings. There was four planted there in Boho, and there's been five others 
in other areas of the Philippines. They have conducted over 50 medical mission campaigns throughout the Philippines in those 10 years while they've been there. Think about that. Five per year. If you've never been on one, they are exhausting. Did you know that? An entire week of medical missions, folks, you are up at 6, 6.30 in the morning and you go to bed 10, 11 o'clock at night and you do that five or six days straight. It is work. Do that five times a year for 10 years, you've labored diligently in that country. So they're doing a great work while they're there. Since their arrival, there's been four major disasters that have hit that land. Four. It's unbelievable. Now remember, they got there when? May of 2012. Folks, in October of 2013, 15 months later, the first disaster strikes. It was a 7.2 earthquake that hit that land. A 7.2 earthquake. 156 fatalities and there's a picture of some of the destruction that they suffered. It's hard to imagine, isn't it? Before they could even begin to recover from that in November of 2013, one month later, a second disaster strikes. A typhoon by the name of Yolanda went straight across the Philippine Islands. Folks, it is the strongest typhoon, that's just a hurricane, that has ever hit landfall on any place on the earth. The strongest ever. 6,352 fatalities. 1,771 missing. They never found the bodies. A fatality is when a body is found. Missing when you don't find the body. Folks, that's almost 9,000 people died in that one typhoon. Isn't that amazing? Michael was there on the island. They both were when the typhoon came through. And he thought that he would be involved in relief efforts for about two, maybe three months. And he spent the next 12 months in relief efforts over that one typhoon. Then we all know what happened just a few years later, don't we? A pandemic struck. Not just the Philippines, but it struck the entirety of the world, didn't it? COVID-19, coronavirus. Folks, it hurt that island severely. No flights in, no flights out. Businesses commanded to be closed. Strict curfews placed on individuals and only one person could ever leave the house at any given time. That was to go to get groceries, and go to get medicine. Now fortunately, because Deborah is a doctor, she was able to leave at any time she desired to leave the house. Utilities increased two times over. Food prices went up 50%. Fuel prices went up 40%. Can you imagine that? Overnight, practically, because of the pandemic. Now here's what's amazing. During the course of that time, those churches, those five on that island, never shut their doors. Every Sunday, they were open for worship. Every Sunday, they were open for worship. Michael tells me that individuals were starving, they were hungry, they could barely get enough food, and every Sunday, the church prepared meals and fed anybody who came to the worship services. Folks, all the denominations had shut their doors. 
So guess what? They were getting a lot of visitors from many of the denominational groups that were in the area. And they fed them every Lord's Day. 52 fellowship meals a year. We can't hardly do four. That's a lot, isn't it? Sometimes it was the best meal that any of those individuals got through the course of the week. Thirty-three souls were added the first year to the body of Christ because of their efforts. It's amazing, isn't it? Three months ago, a fourth disaster. Another typhoon, this time by the name of Odette. And this particular typhoon passed right over the island of Bohol. 200 mile an hour wind gusts. 80% of the homes on that one island were totally destroyed. 80% folks. It's amazing, isn't it? In the churches, 41 members lost their homes. 34 of their members suffered partial damage to their houses. And to this day, there is still no electricity and no internet. When there's a threat of a hurricane, even off the coast of Florida, Victor Eskew leaves. You want to know why? I'm not scared of the hurricane. I don't like losing power. I want to get up and get a shower and feel good in the morning, don't you? Can you imagine? Michael and Deborah have gone three months, no electricity, no internet, and do not know when it's going to be restored. Three months. And we think we got it bad, don't we? It's unbelievable. Here's some of the effects of Super Typhoon Odette. Two more pictures. Houses just thrown to the ground, totally destroyed. Folks, it's awful what that nation has faced over the course of the last ten years. There's two primary needs in the Philippines right now. Number one, there is the need of repairs to those homes. Some of them are total rebuilds, some are repairs. The estimated cost for the church is $76,300. To this day, they have raised half of that. Half of that. So they still need $36,000 just to rebuild their homes, repair their church buildings, and other facilities. It's unbelievable, isn't it? Here are the houses that they are building for their members. Folks, it's nothing like the homes you and I have. One room structures, sometimes for families having four, five, and six people living in them. Block homes with wooden tops, that's it. No central heat and air, just a place for our family to be private and to be protected. That's why it doesn't cost nearly as much money as what our homes cost. So that's one of the needs there. But there's another one. There's a church that is in this particular city, Tablarian City Church of Christ. And right now they are worshiping under a home that is on stilts. There is a concrete pad there that is big enough for two cars. Sixty members of the Lord's church worship there every first day of the week. How would you like for all of us who are here this morning, assemble outside, under a house, on a piece of concrete, every Lord's day? It's not big enough for classes, so they have no classes. 
So kids, adults, everybody, that's where they worship. Every first day of the week. They're just about to outgrow that piece of concrete. So guess what they want? They want a building, don't they? They found a piece of land, a half acre of land. That half acre cost $156,863. We go to buy a lot, and they say, well, this lot costs $30,000, and we about fall on the floor, don't we? $156,000. And that lot is cheap. The man is giving them a deal on that lot. There's two other lots for sale in the near vicinity and each one of those lots are 250,000 plus. They're not cheap. To this date, they've put down half on that lot, $75,000. The owner is financing it for them and they have three years to pay the lot off. Three years. Because that's a lot of money isn't it? So they have about $110,000 that they are in desperate need of to make repairs to homes and houses and to purchase that piece of property. When they finally get it purchased, they're not only going to have an enclosed church building, they can't close it right now, they just have uh, like a pole barn that's there right now. But they'll be able to enclose it, put electricity in it. They're also going to put up a small medical clinic on that half acre so that Deborah can practice medicine and help those Filipinos who are there. And they'll also put in a small apartment there so that Deborah and Michael will have a place to live. I was thinking... What if Oceanside provided $5,000 in a month? And what if 22 other congregations could do like we've done and come up with $5,000? Guess what, folks? All their needs could be taken care of in a month, couldn't it? $110,000. It's not impossible. I find it interesting that, you know, we're deeply concerned and rightfully so about what goes on in our own lives, aren't we? And then we turn on the television and we hear what's going on in a place like Ukraine and it's horrible. It's horrible. To see individuals being killed, bombs going off, property being destroyed, families being split apart, individuals dying in war, it's horrible. But you see, there's other things going on in our world too. Just like what's going on in the Philippines right now. And folks, their lives are hard. And they're struggling. And it's difficult work. And we have a couple over there who are willing to give themselves full time to be in that kind of an environment in order to help bring souls to Jesus Christ. Michael made mention, I made mention of Michael being involved in that one year relief effort. He said that every day they were conducting anywhere from one to two or three Bible studies during that relief effort. Every day.